Okay, just want to spend some time going over some basic rules of differentiation. Here we are on the second side of uh, AP Calc AB. And as I look, some of you are still struggling a little bit with some basic differentiation rules. So let's kind of go through this a little bit. Um, what I'm hoping to look at is chain rule, quotient rule, and the product rule. So here's this problem where y is equal to the quantity 2x minus 7 raised to the third power. And if you can see, I changed the colors of the parentheses and the exponent because I'm trying to show this as a composite function. That is, that the function that we have here, I would like you to consider that we're looking for dy dx of this function f of g of x. And that derivative is described by this. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to take the derivative of the outside part first. So it's right using the power rule. 3 times 1 is 3. Decrement the exponent by 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. And I'm just going to put this g of x part of the function back in there because we're not taking the derivative of that now. We're going to take it next. So once we have this done, we go back here. And what is the derivative of 2x minus 7? Well, the derivative of 2x minus 7, of course, is just 2, right? So just to finish our dy dx of this is 2 times 3 is this 6, and put this piece back. Okay, let's try another one. I think that we're going to make some progress here. Ooh. Here's another function that looks very, very similar. Uh, and again, I'm talking about we're looking for dy dx, the derivative of a function that's f of g of x, a composite function. And remembering that that derivative is f prime at g of x, or the derivative of the outside piece, times the derivative of the inside piece. So that's, that's kind of where we're heading right now. So again, I color coded it. I'm going to take this x1, I'm going to multiply it out here. So 4 times 3 is this 12 right here. I'm going to reduce the exponential value by 1. That's this 3. I'm going to put this g of x part back in here. Right? And then finally, we're going to go to the second part where we finish up our differentiation right over here. And we're going to take the derivative of the inside. Well, what is the derivative of 4x, I'm sorry, excuse me, of 4 minus 9x? And of course, that derivative is just negative 9. Now, I'm just going to simplify this a little bit and wrap it up. Negative 9 times 12 is negative 108, I hope, times the quantity 4 minus 9x quantity to the third power. You, of course, do not need to expand that out. It would be a mess. Here's another one, not totally dissimilar, but one that seems to bother a lot of you that I've gotten a couple requests for. So let's look at this. We start off with this function that's 1 over t minus 3 quantity squared. There's more than one way to do this, but I think what I'm going to do, if you don't mind, is I'm just going to simplify this as a rewrite. I'm gonna, right, we know that exponents are distributive over addition, so 1 squared is just 1. And t minus 3 squared, be careful here, is the quantity t minus 3 squared. Right, We can't... We can't distribute this negative to inside of there because that is not true, right? Exponents are not distributive over addition. Anyway, so we have this. So here's my first rewrite. So here's f, f of t again. And I'm like, I'm looking at this and wondering, is there a way I can rewrite this in a simpler form so I can, so I can differentiate this? And lo and behold, isn't it true that we have in the denominator, we have t minus 3 quantity to the second power. We can bring that up as a negative exponent, can't we? And from here, hopefully you can see now, by the color coding, that we have this in a form that we can easily use the chain rule. And I think that we can by taking the derivative of the outside. So negative 2 times this 1 is this negative 2. Be careful. This is negative 2 minus 1, and negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3, right? We could forego taking the derivative of the inside, but that could lead to problems later. So let's do that. What is the derivative of t minus 3? Well, the derivative of t minus 3 is just 1, and that's 1, this 1 right here. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to simplify this, and I'm going to clean this up. So it's important that we know that we need to simplify, simplify here if possible. And this piece right here, simplified, is this, isn't it? Okay, let's try just, I think, one last problem, okay? Actually, maybe we'll try two more problems. Because this one, again, goes to the question again. I, I was saying in class today that the most difficult thing, I think, is not the differentiation sometimes, but rather the rewrite. And if you rewrite it, I think the differentiation becomes much easier. So let's try that a little bit. We look at this, and this is not a great thing to look at. y equals 1 over the square root of x plus 2, and how in the world would I differentiate that? So I start off by saying, well, maybe we can rewrite it, question mark? 
and we can. We know that the square root of something is the same as raising it to, this is a one-half power, so if you can't read that, this is a two, to the one-half power. And we know if we have an exponential value in the, in the denominator, it can come up as a negative exponent, can't it? So that's what we did there. Now I think we can really start to differentiate this. This is really in the form of the chain rule. This negative one-half comes out to here. Negative times one is this negative one-half. Remember, negative one-half minus one, which is minus two halves, is equal to negative three halves, isn't it? Okay, then go back, simplify this. This negative one is this one. This two is this one. And this whole quantity is raised to a negative exponent, so we can simplify it by bringing it down as a positive exponent into the denominator. Uh, as a secondary way of rewriting this, you could do this. You could say square root of x plus 2 raised to the third power. All right, we're trying not to take too much time, but let's try it. Oops, let's try one more. I think it's on the next page. Yes. All right, this one is kind of weird, and it kind of blew up a little bit on us, but let's take a quick look. We have f of x equals x squared minus the quantity x minus 2 to the fourth power. I recognize two things here. One is I look at this second part, I'm like, oh my gosh, here's a chain rule, but here's another function here that's being multiplied. This is a product rule. So at that time, then I really start that list building idea. So I'm just going to start to take simple derivatives of the parts, and I say let f of x equal x squared, and the first derivative of x squared, of course, is 2x. I'm saying, I'm suggesting to you that g of x is equal to x minus 2 raised to the fourth power. And there's that. But the derivative of that, now we have to use the chain rule and the product, and we're using the chain rule and the product rule kind of simultaneously. So I'm going to take this derivative. The derivative here is 4 times this is 4. Decrease this exponential value by 1, multiplied by the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of x minus 2, of course, is 1. And that's this one right here. Now, finally, I'm going to go back, and I'm going to start to build this. I, I didn't say it was simple, but look at what you have. See if you can recognize what rule, rule or rules you're going to use and start building appropriate lists, and I think it will be much easier. So here's this. I'm going to remind myself of the product rule, which is that f of x times g prime at x plus g of x times f prime at x is, uh, is the product rule, which is dy dx of f of x times g of x, and that's what we have here. Here's my f of x value here, my g prime at x value here, my g of x value here, my f prime at x value here. You may want to stop the tape for just a second, pause, and try to catch up a little bit. There is time to do that. After I did all that, I start realizing that there are some common factors I can take out, and so that's what I'm doing here. Um, I multiply this times this, I get 4x squared. I, I bring this 2x to the front here, and then I look, I'm like, you know what? 4x squared and 2x have a common fact of a greatest common factor of 2x, so I take that out. x minus 2 to the third power and x minus 2 to the fourth power have a greatest common factor of x minus 3 cubed. And I just factored this out. And look, when I factored this out, this stuff started to go together. Therefore, right, these parentheses come down here, and I get 3x, uh, sorry, 2x plus x is 3x, and then this negative 2 right here is this one, and there's that derivative. Again, not easy, but practice, practice, practice makes perfect. Um, if you have any comments, please write them. And if there's a question or comment that you have about this particular video, please leave that for me. Um, I thank you for your hard work. Please keep working. Practice makes, per well, what did I say? Perfect practice makes perfect. So keep going. You can do this.